Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. We are now at the end of April, so of course it is time for my April reading wrap up. So this month I've read seven books and then I've had one book that I've been like trying to read throughout the entire month and just like made no progress on it, which was The Bride Crown and I think I just read 30 pages, I put it down and then I picked up a lot more books that I was obsessed with. <laughs> we just not got back to this one yet. Nothing about this book, we're just getting to it. But no, it means that book is like a lovely light pink line that starts from starts from here and then goes throughout my entire month. Also I finished or like started reading pretty much every book on a Monday or Tuesday, which is fun. So this month we have some like new genres or new moods according to Storygraph coming into my reading. We have reflective, inspiring and hopeful, which I don't think have debuted on the pie chart yet. Am I turning over a new leaf? Am I becoming a positive, inspiring reader? We'll see if this hangs around for long. And also hopeful and reflective are like some of my biggest moods this month. Like emotional is still my number one as per, and adventurous is up there. But these new nice ones are taking over. And in terms of genre, YA, LGBT and fantasy are still dominating as usual. I still believe YA is not a genre, it's an age category, and LGBT is not a genre, it's something else. Representation, I guess. So now my top genre is fantasy. Also, Erotica has made its debut, I think, for the first time ever in my reading habits, because I read First Creation, and that apparently is Erotica. It's a, it's a big month for me, doing all these new things. My average rating this month is 3.36 stars. I've actually rated every single book I read this month. Usually there's a few I miss out, such as I'm reading um, entries for the Indian Awards, usually some beta reads or proofreading in there that I don't count until the book's actually out. But for whatever reason this month, I did decide to include all my ratings, and it's uh, 3.36. And then in total, I read 1,555 pages and 10.05 hours, which was one audiobook. And most of my reading is in the second half of the month. I don't know what's going on at the first half of the month. That meant I was like busy or didn't read or didn't want to read. But it picked up at the end. I think I was just trying to rush to get more books read because I was like, oh my god, I can't only read three books. That's embarrassing, but it's not. It's still an accomplishment. So I think that is all my statistics. Let's talk about the books individually. The first book I finished reading was First Creation, which I believe is by Mars Adler. I took a screenshot of like my Goodreads year in, year in books thing so I could have the covers and authors in front of me, but yet the screenshot quality is not quite good enough for me to see that name. But yeah, First Creation, that was one of the books I was reading as an Indie Inca Wars entry. And it's a book I've had on my TBR, but you somehow just know nothing about that. Like, I didn't realise it was under 100 pages long. I didn't realise there was cannibalism. But the plot of the book is... What is the plot of the book? Basically two angels, or like an angel and a fallen angel on the rival sides of the war have like, I guess an enemies, enemies to lovers romance. They are exiled from this war, they run away together to try and save each other. It's all very romantic and beautiful and there's cannibalism. That I'm pretty sure is not the plot of the book, but I read it at the start of the month and my brain has been horrific for remembering things, this month specifically. So I'm trying my best right now. The second book I finished reading was How to Breathe Ash by Alex Anonymous, and Alex Anonymous is an author or person that I just like have a... I care about them deeply just because I follow them on TikTok, they make so much like indie publishing content, book promoting content, and I am in awe of someone who has what, published 18 or 20 books in the past two years, past three years, before they've turned 20 or something like that, that I admire. The creative output here, like Taylor Swift doing 10 albums in so many years. How do I get that level of productivity? But How to Brief Ash, I enjoyed it. However, my actual flaw of the book is that it's written in second person. I did not realise until after buying and actually opening the book that it was in second person. I haven't seen any promotional content from Alex Anonymous saying it's in second person. I must have skimmed the reviews and the blurb or the book description is written in third. So I was like, okay, the blurb represents the book, surely, and it did not. It was overall an enjoyable read. All of their books are around 200 pages long, so they're pretty fast reads as well, but it just took me so long to get into the book because of the second person, and in the spirit of Indie April, I was not giving up on an indie book. But no, this book's great because autistic representation, sapphic, girl with guy dog. Guy dog? not guide dog, medical assistance dog. Very fun representation there. Next book I finished reading was Between Perfect and Real 
I this was a library read. I think it was an impulse decision because I hadn't heard this book I th until very recently, and I got it out of the library straight away. But I was drawn into it because it is about a you know teenager in school realizing they're trans and then coming out. And as I'm currently working on a book with trans representation, I thought you know let's read a little bit more into all the perspectives I can, so I can work out how I want to do it for myself. And I think this is my lowest rated read of the month. It's like I finished it, so I enjoyed it enough to do that. But my main issue with the book is a me thing rather than the issue with the book. Is that as the character comes out as trans to their various like loved ones, family members, girlfriend, anytime anyone like reacts negatively, not even negatively, anyone someone doesn't react fully enthusiastically, positively, immediately, they get like deeply upset and start acting like, oh, this person hates me. It's an issue with that character itself, is that I know that it can't be representative representative of like, you know, every trans experience is representative of this specific one. But when the character is suddenly hating and turning on all their friends because someone was like took two days to process receiving this big information, I I struggled. I struggled with connecting to this character. That's why my first reading was The Lost Sisters novella or short story. It's part of the Cruel Prince universe. It's set between the Cruel Prince and the Wicked King, I believe, and it's from Taryn's perspective of just like apologising to Jude for being a terrible sister and dear god she is a terrible sister. I have nothing else to say about this book except dear god she is a terrible sister. Next book I finished reading was Junk 7 by Olive J. Kelly and this is a book again I've had on my TBR for a while because it's an indie read. I've seen it floating around in indie publishing spaces and I thought you know I'm into that one, I'm interested in that one. And also anytime an indie book gets like notable success I'm like oh my god. How, how did you do that? I must I must read it to find out more, to find out, you know, the tips and tricks of the trade. And this book is also included in the Rainbow Crate March box, which I ordered because it has Kate Ancrum's Icarus in it. And this, as the book came out in March, it's a US book and box, I thought, you know, it will be shipped in March, it will arrive in April, I will get to read Icarus before the UK May release date. And it's currently April 29th, and the box is still not here. And my UK pre-order was dispatched two weeks early. <laughs> so either way, I'm going to have a lovely special edition of Icarus and Junker 7, which I'm so glad because I read this book and I loved it. In extreme summary, Junker 7 is about a Junker who is someone who likes loots or scraps ships and like that kind of trade. Does odd jobs, we'll say. Legality, questionable. So the Junker, whose name escapes me, his job is to basically smuggle this like trans activist who is trying to like take down the government across the galaxy so they don't kill her. Again, extre extreme summary representation. Our main character is a non-binary lesbian. I think that is the terms used in the book. Then we also have our trans femme lesbian. And then we have a whole a whole like completely diverse cast because we're in like a, almost like a queer normative. I don't think it's normative because the a lot of the governments in this book spend their time trying to, you know, eradicate trans healthcare and things like that. But we're also in a world where the cast is predominantly like trans, queer, LGBT, which is so lovely to read because for once they are the majority. And that is again like representative of my own life because when you are a queer person, you tend to gravitate towards each other. It's quite fun like that. But I think the thing that put me off reading Junk Sum for so long is that it's sci fi and that's just not a genre I dabble in as we discussed earlier in this video. And, but I am so glad I did. I don't know if it's just because this author has like a very fun, engaging writing style and that it's not too heavy on sci-fi, but maybe I'll branch out. The next read I finished was a reread of The Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, audiobook. So I'm working on you know, rereading the first two books so I get on to read the third and finally like complete that trilogy and that era of my life. And again, I love this book. It's fun. It's exciting. It's a pretty light-hearted, easy-to-read fantasy. I love Jax. Jax was my favourite character in like Caraval and Legendary and whatever the third book in Finale. Finale. And it's always really fun to revisit these characters, especially as audiobooks, because I can't like absorb new information via audiobook. That's why I do it for rereads only. And it's nice just to hear it in the background, like a very comforting fairy tale in a sense. And the final book I finished reading this month was The House for Lost Things by C.G. Drews, also known as Paper Fury. 
It is the third book in the Boy Who Still Houses trilogy, which I think it's somewhere on a shelf. Somewhere on a shelf behind me, probably hidden by these prints. And also, this, these three prints here are characters from that series. So the first book, Boy Who Still Houses, was traditionally published, and the second two, The Kings of Nowhere and The House for Lost Things, were published via Patreon. And I can't wait for the day that CG Drews finally, if if they want to, if they want to, commits to self-publishing them so I can have a physical copy on my shelf. I need it in my life. And hit, hit me up. Hit me up if you need help with this, because I like to pretend I'm good at making books. And this book I literally finished reading this morning and I stayed up late last night trying to get it done as fast as possible because I am obsessed, I am consumed by it. Like, I can't fall thoughts right now. I'm definitely going to be posting a review for this sometime in the future. Mostly because I've done a review for the other two, so it makes sense to do all three. And I will have a review for Junker 7 as well. And I have so many thoughts I'm going to put into that review, but for what I say now... Probably my favourite read of the month. Junker 7 is up there, but... I'm obsessed with C.G. Drews, their writing style, their... Especially noticing the differences between traditionally published and their self-published or Patreon-published works. Because, you know, you have The Boy Who Still Houses, which is incredibly polished. Everything in there is intentional. Not to say that the indie published ones aren't intentional, but you can tell there's definitely a lot more freedom to have fun. And, like, have the softer moments and, like, the slower moments that would, I guess, be edited out for pacing. So I really love these, like, almost unfiltered but still incredibly well-written and well-structured sequels that I am so sad did not get picked up for traditional publishing. But no, I have so little but so much to say about that book that I will be posting a long, probably detailed review at some point this year. And also at some point this year I will finish reading this one. <laughs> I will just finish reading this one. Also I love the cover on this and like the little dandy line is the O and I also love when books, especially indie published books, take the time and the det attention to detail to have the actual cover font on the inside of why is there a motorbike outside my house. But no, that is all my reading. There's seven books I've read this month and a whole lot of new moods and genres and other tags in there. In the comments below, let me know your favourite reads for this month and if you've read any of the ones I've read so far. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.